Welcome to the Stitch Sessions and Happy Holidays. We have another fun Christmas crochet tutorial for you this week. And it is this really fun, cute little Christmas bag bowl. And I call it the bag bowl because you can make it into a sweet little Christmas bag that you can stuff with lots of little goodies. You can cinch it at the top, as you can see here, with a pretty little bow. Or you can actually uncinch the bow and leave it open maybe on a mantle or a table, side table, something like that, filled with lots of treats and goodies where people can just easily reach in and grab their favorite little Christmas treat. And I just thought it's a great way to use some uh, leftover uh, Christmas yarn. You know, a lot of those reds and whites get left over a lot of the time. So I hope that you're gonna enjoy working on this project. It's not gonna take you too long. It is fairly beginner friendly. We are working on uh, using crochet circles. So if you're a little bit new to it, this will be perfect for you to practice. So let's get all of our materials together and let's jump right in. Alrighty, here we go. So here are the materials you're gonna need for your Christmas candy bag bowl. And um, I'm just using some leftover yarn here. I would say it would take you around 50 grams worth of yarn, 50 to 75. Also, as always, depending on the size of your bag. So I've got some leftover red here, which will be perfect for the holiday season. And I've got some of this fantastic white. And I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but it's got this really pretty kind of tinselly um, sparkle that runs through it. And this is the Caron Simply Soft Party by Yarnspirations. So these are both a medium four weight yarn. You can use any kind of yarn that you like. That's what I'm using. You're also gonna always need to have a pair of scissors on hand and a trusty darning needle for sewing in your ends at the end. And for this project, I'm using a five millimeter hook, also known as an H or a size eight. So let's get started. We're going to begin with a cinch circle. So you're just gonna wrap the yarn around your fingers just like that. And with your hook, you're gonna just pull through to create a loop. So this creates a circle. I know it feels a bit wonky. And that's why I then will chain one to secure your circle. And then we just move that tail out of the way there. Okay, we're now gonna to proceed to chain an additional one. And now we're going to do a half double crochet into the circle. So we'll yarn over, insert our hook into the circle, pull up a loop, you'll have three loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through all three. And that is our half double crochet. I hope that this red yarn will be okay. I know sometimes red is really kind of tricky on camera, but we'll do my best to make sure that the focus stays as much in place as possible. So now what we wanna do is we wanna to proceed to do another six half double crochets into the center of this circle. This initial chain two will indeed count as a stitch. So in total, we're going to have eight half double crochets. So we'll always yarn over and insert, and then you'll yarn over and pull through all three loops, okay? So go ahead and do that until you have eight stitches worked into your ring, and I'll meet you here shortly. Once you have eight half double crochets, we're going to take our little short tail and we're going to cinch this circle shut. Just like that. And you want to pull nice and tight. So see that? So now it bunches all of our stitches together. Now we're going to close off our round. And we're going to do that by finding the top of our chain one, which is right here. And we're going to slip stitch to join. My apologies, guys. I just realized I have red nail polish and I'm working with red yarn. So um, I hope that you will be able to see this clearly. So see how it creates a little bit of a um, a nice round shape. So you, so you should have eight stitches all together. So this is the base of our bowl or our bag. So now for round two, we're going to chain one 
And we're not going to count that chain one as a stitch from here on out. We're now going to half double crochet back into that same stitch we slip stitched into. So you can see that there. So we're going to do a half double crochet into there. And then we're going to go back into the same stitch and place another half double crochet into that same stitch. And what that does is it increases the number of stitches. So we generally call that an increase. And that's what we're going to do going all the way around the circle for round two. So I would go into the next, I'm just going to leave that short tail behind there and weave that in oh. after. I'm going to go into the next stitch, which is right there. And I will place one half double crochet. And then I'll go back into the same stitch and place a second one. Okay, so it looks something like that. So I'm going to go two, 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 all the way around. At the end of round two, you should have 16 stitches. So go ahead and do that for round two, and I'll meet you at the end of 16 stitches. Okay, I've come to the end of my 16 stitches, and sometimes people will see this and think that there's still a stitch left. First thing you want to do is always go back word, move backward and count the number of stitches. So if you're uncertain, I know that at the end of round two I need 16 stitches. So I've gone back, I counted, and I do indeed have 16 stitches. This, what looks like a stitch here, is what we call a false stitch. In fact, that's the stitch that we pulled that slip stitch out of. So we are just going to go directly into the top of our chain two. Sorry, we're just going to go into the top of that very first half double crochet we stitched, which is right there. And that is where we will slip stitch to join. Okay. Now, if you find that it's already starting to do that, um, you may be stitching a little bit tighter than the previous round. So sometimes if I'm not paying attention, that's what happens. Because right now, the reason why we're doing these increases is because we'd like our work to stay flat for a little bit, okay? So now we're going to move on to round three. For round three, you're going to chain one and back into that same stitch where we slip stitched, we're going to do a half double crochet back into that same stitch. So that is why the chain one does not count as anything. It's just there to kind of help us get started. So there's one half double crochet. Now we're going to go into the very next stitch right there, and that's where we're going to do two half double crochets. So there's one, and there's two. Okay, just like that. My apologies, guys, if you can hear a lot of noise in the background. It always seems when I'm ready to film that uh, there seems to be tons of construction outside. So hopefully um, the sound doesn't pick it up, but if it does, my apologies. Um, okay, moving on now to the next stitch right there. We are going to place one half double crochet into that stitch. So for round three, the pattern is going to be as follows. You're going to have one half double crochet into one stitch and then two into the next. So for round three, we're going to be increasing into every second stitch. Okay, so I just did two, so the next one would be one, two, one, two, all the way around. At the end of round three, you want to have 24 stitches. So go ahead and continue on with the pattern and I will meet you at the end of round three. Okay, so I've come up to the end of my round three and I have 24 stitches. So I know that's correct. So I'm going to find the top of my very first stitch, which is right there, and I'm going to slip stitch to join. Okay, so basically the bottom of this bag is following the, the core principles of creating a crochet circle. 
And if you want to familiarize yourself with how to continuously make a flat circle, we do have a tutorial about how to crochet a circle and the principles on how to continually make it bigger. And uh, we'll just leave it in the cards up here. Um, and the reason why that's going to be important is depending on how big you'd like your candy bag or bowl to be. Okay, so we're going to increase a few more rounds. You may want to keep yours here. You may want to make yours bigger. So just understanding those principles really help. So we are going to do another round of increasing. So going on to round four, we're going to chain one again. And this time I am going to do two half double crochets into the base of that same stitch. So those of you that follow me regularly also know that I will alternate where I place my increases at the beginning of each round when I'm working in this circular round. Okay, so for round four, I'm starting with an increase. So that's two into the same stitch. Now I'm gonna place one half double crochet into the next stitch. Whoops. And then I'm gonna place one half double crochet into the next stitch. So for round four, what's happening is we are leaving two individual stitches in between each increase, whereas the previous round, we only left one individual stitch. So into the next stitch, we're going to do our increase, which is two half double crochets. And there's my second. And now I'm going to do two individuals, one into each of the next two. So I'll yarn over and go into the very next stitch right there. So that's one. And then that is the second one. Okay, and that's what we're going to do all the way around round four. You're going to do two, one, one, two, one, one, etc., etc., all the way around. At the end of round four, you should have 32 stitches. So you know what to do, and I'll meet you there. Okay, at the end of round four, I have 32 stitches, and I am ready to slip stitch to join to the top of that very first stitch. And we are gonna move on to round five. For round five, we're gonna chain one. We're gonna place one half double crochet right back into that same stitch. And now we're going to do one double, I'm sorry, one half double crochet into the next two stitches. So we have the second one is there. And then into the next one there. Okay, so now for round five, we're going to have three individual half double crochets before we do an increase. So now into the next stitch is where our increase is. So we'll place one and two. Okay, so that's the pattern for round five. So again, we have one individual half double crochet, two half double crochets, and then three half double crochets. And now we're going to do our increase, which is two half double crochets into that same stitch. Okay, so basically we're going to be doing one, two, three, two, one, two, three, two, all the way around. So at the end of round five, you want to have 40 stitches. So off you go and I'll meet you at the end of 40 stitches. All right, so I've slip stitched the end of my round five. I have 40 stitches and I'm super happy with that. We're gonna do another round, round six. You'll chain one. And now we're going to begin with an increase. You're gonna do two half double crochets right back into the same stitch where you slip stitched, okay? So right back 
into here. Sorry guys, if the focus is going in and out, my camera is just having a field day with this red yarn and as well with the construction outside. So I'm trying my best to make sure that it's nice and clear for you guys. So there's two stitches into one. So we started with an increase. Now what we're gonna do for round six is we're gonna do four individual stitches and then an increase. Okay, so that means into the next stitch, we're gonna do one half double crochet, and then a second one into the next stitch, then a third one into the next stitch, and a fourth one into the next stitch. And now we would do our increase. So into the next stitch, we're going to place two half double crochets and do another one right back into that same stitch, just like that. Okay. So now we're going to do an increase one, two, three, four, and an increase. So at at the end of round six, you're going to have 48 stitches. So as you notice, we keep, because we started with a count of eight, we keep increasing the number of stitches by eight as you increase your rounds. And that's one of the basic principles of the crochet circle, okay? So go ahead and do that. I just realized that I still have some pink highlighter marker on my hand. Sorry about that, guys, if it's distracting. You know, with Christmas and doing cards and things like that, it's been uh, tricky trying to get all this stuff off your hands. Um, all right, guys, I'm going to set you loose for round six. You should have 48 stitches at the end, and I will see you shortly. Okay, so at the end of round six, your bag will look something like this, which looks nothing like a bag or a bowl. So we've got this nice round, flat circle. And we are now going to proceed to build up the sides of our bowl slash bag. So as you can see, this is the right side of my work. So we are going to continue working that way. But eventually, this part is going to be the inside of your bag or bowl. And I'll just weave that in afterwards. So now what we're going to do is we are going to chain one as we've always done. And for this round, which is round seven, we are just gonna proceed to do one half double crochet into each and every single stitch all the way around. There will be no increases for round seven. So I'm gonna yarn over and I'm gonna go right back into that same stitch that we slip stitched out of to join there. And I'm just gonna do my half double crochet as usual. Okay, and that is what I'm going to go ahead and do all the way around. Just want to make sure I get the right stitch in there. Okay, so you just go one into each stitch. So once you've done one, then you just go to the stitch right beside it. Okay. So at the end of round six, you will have 48 stitches. And at the end of round seven, which is the round we're working on now, you should still have 48 stitches, okay? So go ahead and do that, and I will meet you at the end of round seven. So at the end of round seven, just slip stitching to join here. And I still have 48 stitches, but you can definitely see, i just show you, it is curling upwards. That's exactly what we want to have happen. So once you stop increasing your number of stitches, that is what creates the curved look upwards, okay? And that's what we want for our bowl shape. And so now for the next several rows, that is all we're gonna keep doing. We're just gonna continue to place one half double crochet into each stitch all the way around. So we've just finished round seven. And for my bowl, I'm gonna go ahead and do another five more rounds in total. Just one half double crochet into each stitch all the way around. So you will have a total of 12 rounds from the beginning 
all the way up to the brim of our bowl or our bag. Now, could you make this more rounds? Absolutely. And I may even change my mind as I go along. Um, but just to start off with, that's what we're going to do. We're going to do an additional five rounds. Because I want this to be a bowl slash bag, um, I want to give it enough height so that then if we want to, we can cinch the top and add it as a great little gift topper or part of a gift. Um, or I can leave it shallow enough so that the opening uh, will remain nice and open and just sit nicely as a little treat bowl, either on a table or a desk somewhere. And you'll see that effect once we work up our sides a little bit higher, okay? So a long way to say uh, we're going to start again with our chain one and then half double crochet right back into that same stitch. And we're going to do exactly what we did for the previous round for another five rounds. One half double crochet into each. Okay, so I have gone ahead and added two extra rounds. So in total, my bag now has 14 rounds from the center all the way up. So after we did our initial six rounds of our bottom, I ended up doing another eight rounds to give me the height that I was quite happy with. Also part of the reason is I wanted to use up the very end of this skein. So um, that is why I went an extra two rows. And I actually like this depth a little bit better. So I've slip stitched at the end. So at this point, I'm just gonna snip my yarn and fasten off. And now we're gonna add our white, whoops, our white trim. There we go. Okay, and I'm gonna I'm gonna work that tail in. So I'm gonna get rid of the red for now, and we're gonna bring in that really sweet sparkly white yarn. Okay, and so for our trim, we're gonna begin with a slip knot. And I always like to start just on the other side of where I fastened off the previous row. So I'm going to start right about there. And I'm just going to slip stitch to join my yarn. There we go. Okay, so we're going to chain one, and this round is going to be exactly like the last eight rounds I've done. We're just going to yarn over and insert back into that same stitch, and we're just going to do one half double crochet into each stitch all the way around. So this is just our white round, and I'm going to be working over these tails here. So this isn't anything different than the previous rounds we've done. Now, I want you to notice here, there's the knot, right? Where I fastened off. Just wanna find, my camera will focus. I just wanna find the spot just where it'll fit in and pull through. Sometimes when you're working around where you fastened off, it can be a bit tricky. That's why sometimes I like to start a few stitches in so that I can just crochet over it as opposed to it being obvious that that's where the join always was. Okay, so it looks like that. Just going to go right into that very next stitch there, working over my tails and pull through. This yarn is a wee bit on the thinner side than the red, even though they're both considered a size four. So I'm just trying to be a little bit more relaxed. Some people might even go up half a hook size. So I'm still using my five. Some people in this case might do a 5.5, .5, but I'm pretty comfortable and confident with being able to be a little bit more relaxed with my stitches. So that's it for this round. So for me, this is round 15 now. And I'm just gonna do one round in the white here by placing one half double crochet into each stitch all the way around. And I still have 48 stitches. 
All right. So it's really looking much more Christmassy now that we've got the white trim there. So I've gone all the way around. And now I'm just going to slip stitch to the very first stitch to join my round. Just like that. As you can see now, it sits nicely on its own. It's got some really great depth. I love that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create the option of making this a little cinch bag as well. So this is a great add-on to a gift or a tree or under the tree or as a treat ornament if you like to add some treats in here. So we're going to create some eyelets. And those of you that have seen my shoe bag tutorial or even um, the wine bottle tutorial, I do the top of the bag very, very similarly. So here we go. We're going to chain one and half double crochet into that same stitch. And now we're going to half double crochet into each of the next three stitches. So we'll insert here. This is our second one. Yarn over, insert. Oops. This is our third. Sorry, this is our third in total. This is the second one we're going into after the first one. If that doesn't confuse you. Um, so what we're aiming for is to have four individual half double crochets. So we did a chain one and we did one right back into that same stitch. That's one. Then we did an additional three, which gives us two, three, four in total. And that's what we want. We're now going to chain two. And then we're going to skip the next two stitches, one, two. And into that third, we are going to yarn over and place a half double crochet. So by chaining two and skipping two, see how that creates that opening? That's exactly what we want, okay? And then we're gonna to proceed to do one half double crochet into each of the next three stitches again. So we insert, pull through all three. Again, you don't wanna be careful, yeah, sorry. You wanna be careful not to st uh, stitch too tightly especially at this point because it will cause your work to bunch. Okay, so we've got four stitches in total. Now we're going to chain two again. We will skip the next two stitches, one, two, and into the third, we will do a half double crochet again, and then do another three. And that is basically going to be our pattern or formula, as I like to say, for this next round here. So this would be round 16. Okay, so basically, there you go. So you can see the eyelets forming. So you're always doing four half double crochets, chain two, skip two stitches, then do another four half double crochets. We always chain two, we'll skip two, and then four half double crochets. And that's what we're gonna do all the way around. Because we have 48 stitches, it should work out that you should have the last two stitches left and you'll chain two and join. Now, sometimes this is where things get a little bit wonky. You might be one stitch off, you might be two stitches off. It happens, especially working in the round, slip stitching, not the end of the world. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna finish my round and I'm gonna meet up with you right back here. And we're just gonna troubleshoot any possible situations, but it will all be solvable. So I'm gonna continue on with my chain two, skip two, one, two, and half double crochet. Okay guys, I'll meet you back here shortly. All right, so as I suspected, somehow I have dropped two stitches, so what we're gonna do here is we're, I have my last four half double crochets. I'm actually gonna insert and do one more. And now I'm gonna chain two. 
I'm going to skip the next two, which takes me into my very last stitch. So I was just off by two stitches. So I'm just going to insert and do another half double crochet. And now I'm going to slip stitch to join right there. Now sometimes why that happens with the loss of stitches, so see I'm slip stitching to join. Now sometimes uh, if I go accidentally into the next stitch to begin, I've actually lost this stitch. So that's why when we chain one, uh, some people would chain two and let that count as a stitch. But because we are going into that same stitch, I'm only going to chain one. But sometimes it's easy to miss it and go over. So don't panic. It's a long answer for a short question. So all I did was I just added an extra set of stitches or I added one extra here, uh, half double, and then I just added one extra at the beginning. So for the most part, it looks fairly uniform. So you can see that there. I'm pretty happy with it. Okay, so now moving on to round 17, still with our white. We're gonna chain one and we're gonna half double crochet right back into that same stitch there, okay? And now we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna go back into that same stitch and we're gonna do a half double crochet again. So we're gonna start adding a few increases back into our work. So we've got two half double crochets there and now what I want to do is I, I want to do one half double crochet into each of the next five stitches. So I'm going to insert here and do one, two, three, and four is going to be right there. Okay, because remember we chain two, so I like to nestle it just under here. Some people might go in through the top, that's A-OK -okay too, there's nothing wrong with that. Just want to make sure I catch that chain, that's one. Some people might even just go right into the space, which is no problem either. And in fact, that's what I'm going to do for the last one, okay? So I've done five half double crochets after that first increase. Now into the very next stitch, I'm going to increase again. So I'm going to insert one and I'm going to go back in and do two. So anytime we increase, that means we're going to put two stitches in one. Okay. Then I'm going to continue on again, one half double crochet into each of the next five stitches. And this is going to be our pattern all the way around. Okay. So that's my third one. I'm going to nestle in there. And for the fourth one, I'm going to go into the space. And the fifth one, I'm going to go here. Okay. So because I had lost a couple of stitches back there, that's why it's not sitting always perfectly in the same spot. So in the next one, I know I always have to do two half double crochets into one stitch to give me my increase. Now each of the next five stitches will get one half double crochet. So this is the next stitch right here. This is one. And this is the second one. So now to make it easier, every time you come into a space, you know there's two chains, you're going to do two stitches. I'm going to do it this way to show you how easy it can be. So here's one and here's two. You will always stitch two where the chain two space is. So if I increased here, you can see I have two stitches in one. I have one, two, three, four. Now I'm back into regular stitches and five. Okay. Now I know I need an increase. So in this next one, I'm going to do two, one, and two. Okay, so I would say, so see how this one, I did both of them in the space. In this one, I did one, one in the actual stitch and one in the space. It's not a big deal at all. See, you can't even really tell the difference. It's just personal preference. 
So what I'm thinking is to make things a little easier for those of you that are a little unsure, I would um, I would go into the space. Whenever you come across a space, just do two into the space, okay? So go ahead and finish that all the way around, and I will meet you at the end of round 17. Okay, so I've come up to the end of my round. I'm slip stitching to join. And so my work is looking something like this. Okay, really nice. So we've got the eyelets there, we've got our extra round. So I, because of the increases, I have 52 stitches. Now, it can be up to 56 stitches. If you had 48, like you first started, it would be 56 stitches. In fact, you might have 60 or 57. So the thing is with um, stitching in the round sometimes, if I can find sometimes. So you see how you slip stitch there? You can inadvertently see how it kind of goes on an angle because when you stitch, uh, your the top part of the stitch sits to the right of the stitch when you're working in the round. So that what that's what causes the stitches or the seam to lean a bit to the right. So it, it can, it's very easy to um, swallow a stitch, so to speak. So not to worry, it still looks fantastic. You've got the look of it going, the, the stitching looks great still. So what I'm telling you is don't panic. Okay, we're gonna add one more round here and to give it a little bit of an extra frill, which is why we started increasing. We are going to chain two this time and we're gonna go right back into that same stitch and now we're gonna use the double crochet stitch. And so what this is gonna do is just give us a little bit more height, okay? So we're gonna go into the next stitch, we're gonna do a double crochet and into the next stitch we're going to do a double crochet okay so technically it looks like we have two there then one two into the third stitch we are going to do two double crochet stitches so we're going to give our our increase a run here okay so now into the next I'm going to do one double crochet into the next, I'm going to do another double crochet. And into the third stitch, I'm going to do two double crochet stitches. So we're going to be increasing into every third stitch. Okay, so we have one double crochet, we have two double crochets. And now into the third stitch, we're going to place two. Oops. One and two. Okay. So you can see, well, it's doing that because it's it's not all the way around yet. But so we're increasing the number of stitches here. So continue all the way around. So you're going to do one, one, two, one, one, two two. And remember we're using double crochet stitches for round 18. Okay, so you know what to do. I'll meet you at the end here. Okay, so we've just finished round 18 with our increases in every third stitch. And so now your work is looking something like this. It actually looks like an upside down hat. So if you turn it this way, um, Actually, that looks like a really cute Christmas top hat. So uh, you could certainly use it for that. But I wanted this to curl out purposely. Once we put our ribbon in, because this will act as a bag and a bowl, if you're using it as a bowl, you can just fold down the edges like this to create a really pretty little trim. And, and then it will look nicely just like that. And then if you cinch it up, once we add our sash, it'll just have this really beautiful little flare at the top. 
So what I'm going to do is I have a little bit of that red left over. So I am now going to snip my yarn here on the white and just going to fasten off there. And now I'm just going to add up a little tiny bit of red on the trim. Most of the reason is because I just want to finish off this red yarn. Um, but I also like the, the idea of a little finished look there. So again, I'm going to start somewhere on this side. And I'm going to slip stitch to join. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to use single crochet stitches all the way around, okay? So I'm gonna chain one, and I'm gonna go right into that next stitch there, and I'm just gonna do a single crochet. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do two single crochets. So I'm still gonna continue the idea of increasing. So in this round, I'm gonna increase in every second stitch. So I'm gonna go into the next stitch and just do one single crochet. So remember, we're just doing single crochet stitches. And now I'm going to go into the very next stitch, which is right under that knot there. And I'm going to do two single crochet stitches. Okay, just like that. So the next one will be a single or an individual stitch. And then the next one will be an increase. Pretty straightforward. So an increase, I would go back into that same stitch and do that, okay? Yeah, so now you can see it's really starting to, to waver and buckle, which is exactly what we want. Love that. Okay, guys, I'll meet you at the end. Okay, so in the end, I actually had to slip stitch around simply because I did not have enough yarn. Oh, I was hoping that I was going to use it all perfectly, but it happens. So I still have this little bit of a strand left. But in the end, I actually liked how the slip stitch looks because it just gives it this really pretty little finished look about it. Now with slip stitching all the way around, you do have to keep it really relaxed. Otherwise, slip stitches tend to really tighten up. So I just was very conscientious of just keeping it relaxed. And so if you have more yarn and you want to add the trim and do the increases like I was doing, go ahead and do that. If you decide to use slip stitches like I did, I just simply did one stitch into each all the way around. Again, super relaxed because you don't want this cinching in tightly at the top, especially because we want the effect of having this roll over. That looks so good. So I am just going to slip stitch to join back to the top of my round. And now I will snip my yarn and I'll just pull that through like that. So I'm going to weave in my end here and I'm going to show you a little something because I've slip stitched. I guess it doesn't really matter, but I'm trying to go right back into the red color and kind of sneak it down under through the white. Okay, so that way it doesn't interfere too much with the white. Okay, now here I know what you're thinking, but I'm going to try and just go underneath here and then come up around the other side just so that I'm always staying close to the red section. See, so when it's down like that, you can't see too, too much interference. And I'm just going to basically weave it in like that, keeping it really relaxed. And then maybe I will sneak it in one more time. It's tricky to do when you've got like such a contrasting color, but I'm going to do our best here. I'm going to finish weaving this end. 
And then I'm going to show you how we are going to uh, place a ribbon through the top just to give it a finishing look. Okay, so I have weaved in my ends there. You can see that that's a little bit the beginning of the round, but, and well, I tried my best to make it as perfect as I could. I probably could have hidden it better, but stuff happens. What are you going to do? All right, so for the most part, and you know what? This stuff kind of stuff always happens, and it drives me crazy because I know how everybody wants it to look so perfect. But you know what? When it's bunched up like this, when it's um, a satchel, you see, it just all gets hidden. Okay, let's move on to adding our ribbon. Now, you can definitely crochet a sash around here. But I lucked out into coming across this fabulous rhythm, ribbon I already had. So all you're going to do is you're just going to start by feeding it in and then out through the next one. Okay, so that's why we created those eyelets there. You're just going to feed it in and out all the way around. The beautiful thing about this kind of ribbon is it moves so smoothly in and out of these openings. Okay. And actually, I have quite a bit of ribbon here. Okay. So just kind of make it kind of even. So there you go. You can see now that it's going to be able to cinch nicely. So if I have, if I'm going to cinch it, it'll cinch nicely like that. And I can tie a nice big bow because I've got a lot of ribbon here. Whoops. Okay, you can tie it like that. And this makes for an absolutely adorable little add-on for a gift or a little extra treat under the Christmas tree. This would also look really super cute on a mantle and you can have um, a little tag with everybody's name on it. So that might be an alternative to a Christmas stocking depending on the event that you're having. But so this is how it would look if you had it just as a sweet little Christmas candy bag or treat bag or any kind of bag actually. So now if we wanted to turn this into our candy bowl, we simply just loosen the ribbon, open it nice and wide and we fill it with lots of great little holiday treats. I've got these sweet little candy canes. It's perfect for little people or, you know, sometimes I have this at the dance studio. Sometimes people like to kind of reach in and grab a little, a little candy, a little treat. Why not? Oops, that one's broken. So this is what we would do. We'd fill it with our treats. So you can arrange it in any which way you like, creating a nice little display. This is so cute. I love how it came out. Okay, so naturally you can see that it's it's kind of folding down, so you can see that like that. And then, so just to kind of for effect, I'm just keeping the ribbon there, and I'll just tie it again, but it'll remain nice and loose. So because I've got super long sash, I'm going to tie it really big and I know you're thinking what is she doing? I'm going to show you a little trick. So I've got this huge bow like this. Now I'm going to take that same one end here and I'm going to re-loop it into another bow. So what happens is now you've got extra layers in your bow. So the bow now looks super full like that. Isn't that cute? Hopefully you can see that. And that, my darling crochet friends, is 
the Christmas candy bowl or bag. And I am so excited at how it turned out. And I hope that you enjoyed working on this quick little project. Again, a fantastic add-on for that um, for that last, not last minute gift, but if you're looking for something to just add a little something to a gift or even your decor, you've got a lot of people coming over or on your desk at the office, this makes for a quick and great little add-on to any holiday festivity or gift. So now remember, if you want to check out any of our other Christmas crochet tutorials, we'll leave a link in the description box down below, or you can check out this link right up here in the cards where we have more Christmas crochet tutorials. And if you want to stay up to date on all of our crochet tutorials, we post every Wednesday. So if you haven't clicked that subscribe button, make sure you go ahead and do so, so you'll always stay up to date on all of our tutorials. And especially if you click that bell, you'll be notified when our videos go live every Wednesday. In the meantime, everyone, happy holidays, happy crocheting, and take care.